Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 247 of Korea Podcast. Our today's guest is Mr. Axel van Niederkassel. He's an art teacher at Artwad Online School and concept artist at Sketch Studio from Antwerpen, Belgium. And of course, before we get into the, uh, like the signature questions of the podcast, let me quickly mention that in the four contact section of the captions, you can find the ID to his Instagram account and the link to his art session, and also the ID to the Instagram page of Drone, which we're going to talk about very soon in the podcast. And with that out of the way, how are we doing today? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me. Thanks for oh, having me. Oh, my pleasure. And all right. So usually here's the thing. Um, when I start a podcast, with there's like one main question I've been starting every single episode with forever, which is give us a little in- introduction on how we got into the world of visual arts and design. Basically, basically tell us your origin story, if you know how you kind of decided to become a, become an artist and you became an artist, you know? Okay. Okay. Well, I think if I have to go back all the way, um, as a kid, I was always really interested with drawing and creating art and all that stuff. But uh, for some reason, I stopped doing it at the age of eight or nine, I think. And then I went to the whole school system stuff. I got a bachelor degree in chemistry. And then... I started working as like a like an operator in a chemical factory and I hated my job my job so much that I was actually really depre- depressed and I was looking for you know an alternative to to live my life and that's when I started thinking the only thing I could imagine myself doing was just drawing because I remember that I really liked to draw as a kid so I just went online and started watching some YouTube YouTube videos. And then I came across Adam Duff's uh, art channel. Uh, You probably know him, Adam Duff. Oh, Adam Duff, Lucid Pixel, something like that. Lucid Pixel, exactly. I I love that guy. His videos are really helpful and amazing. Amazing amazing person, yeah. So uh, he's doing like a mentorship thing with Lucid Pixel. And so I signed up in the summer of 2019. But uh, there was like an 18-month waiting period. So I signed up and I still had to wait 18 18 months before I could start. So I actually got into the Facebook group of the Lucid Pixel community because I signed up. And that's when I came across Antonio Staparts, who is also from Belgium like me. And watching his profile and uh, seeing that he was working for games and all. So it just blew my mind because initially I started learning how to draw to become a tattoo artist because back then that was the only thing I could think of that was you know uh, a job that you could make money with by drawing so uh, seeing him working for games and all that stuff just blew my mind and then uh, I went to his YouTube channel and I saw that he became a professional artist in two years so I was kind of really getting obsessed with, obsessed with him with how did he do it like what, what were the steps that he took so he has like a, a few YouTube videos on his page all the way, all the way in the beginning. That's called like the Zero Zero to Hero series, and it's basically like a, a few videos on learning how to draw perspective and you know just draw 100 pages of boxes in a one point perspective, 100 pages of boxes in a two point perspective, and all that stuff. So I did all. Of, all those things. And then by the time I was finished with that stuff, he created Artworld, which is like an online online learning platform. And I was one of the first students there. And that's basically how I started my journey. So I did Artworld for like seven to eight months. And Antonio just noticed how fast I was progressing and learning. And then he started like a mentor program as well. So I did like a mentorship with him for a few months. Then I did another another mentorship with Evan Amundsen, which was also really, really fun. And then by the point that that was finished, my mentorship with Adam Duff began. So then I did my ent- mentorship with Adam. And then by that point, I was like a little over two years or not even two, two years in. <laughs> To my you know journey of learning and then antonio hit me up and said like you know 
do you want to start working for Artworld? Because he could use some help with give, giving feedback to students and creating all the assignments for the program. And I said, sure. So Artworld became like my first official job in art. And then fast forward a year, Antonio became like a really good friend of mine. And he was working on this big AAA project, which I can't mention, unfortunately, but uh, he kind of onboarded me for that project and then he created sketch studio uh, which is like a visual development studio for big AAA companies and then i worked as a con- uh, as a comp- concept artist for 13 months i think or f- 14 15 months and then uh yeah that was up until last month and then uh we're here that's awesome so i mean yeah Considering you kind of like, you know, started in 2019. Yeah, it's four years ago. Yeah. No, it's nearly four years ago, I think. Yeah, four years. Yeah. When you're 19, it was four years ago. Yeah, it went oh, so God. fast. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I think we skipped, like, we all of us collectively skipped two years and we don't know how it passed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. feel like every year, time, time goes faster. Like, Every single year. Yeah, we're getting older. Our brain doesn't really process present moment anymore. We're always in the past or the future. And as we blink and see what's going on, six months passed. We're four years, four months later, it'll be 2024, my friend. Who would have thought? Like just in January, I was talking with my friends about our goals for this year and we're four months away. (laughs) (laughs) You still have to come up with your goals? (laughs) Yeah, I mean, it's still, you know, something, you know, corny, but like, I don't know. It's it's not a bad thing. Like it's a way our brain, it helps us grasp the concept of time and progression, I guess, with New Year's, I guess. I don't know. Oh, yeah, I know. I really like uh, New Year's resolutions let's say but only if you stick to them yeah and not leave it after first week yeah yeah usually it's it's a good way to reflect on the past year so yeah i try to do every year at new year's i try to reflect on the past year see what i've done the challenges that i overcame and what i've learned and then, then i try to step it up a little bit next year yeah yeah that sounds pretty good and all right now, speaking of reflections, um, were you originally starting art and design? Like, let's say when you were in high school, like, you know, while you were pe- thinking about your career path or future, uh, what was your first choice? Like, like, did you even go to university or college? Like, how did things happen for you? Like, in terms of like, you know, then later switching to art and all that stuff. Like, do you mean if I was doing art stuff yes. back in college or? Yes, or it was another um, career path or something, another path for you. No, uh, like I said, um, I went to school and I studied chemistry. Um, so <laughs> there's no there's no art in chemistry. Um, we only had like a little bit of, of art in, in high school. So from 12 to 18 years old, we had like one hour a week. Or not even to 18 years, 18 years old. I think we did four years, like from 12 to 16 years old. We got like one hour or two hours a week of drawing classes, but uh, those were really, really primitive and you didn't really learn a lot. It was more like copying references rather than really learning the fundamentals of drawing. But uh, after that was over, I, I, I went to college and, and did a bachelor. So all my focus went to atomic bonds and chemicals and all that stuff. So I completely stopped drawing and then I picked it up at the age of 24 after I got uh, graduated. All right. And well, we spoke about how you started and how your career path, you know, kickstarted. But now I want to ask, you know, what later down the road led you to become like, um, you're a concert artist right, right now, right? Yeah. Well, not technically not anymore because we, we stopped working uh, with Sketch last month. Um, so right now I'm just doing art world, which is mostly grading assignments, like a little bit of teaching and then doing some live streams and also, um, creating all the assignments as examples. So let me just quickly tell you how art world works. So art world is basically 
like a dynamic learning platform online where we give you on a bi-weekly basis a new video every two weeks and then in the in that video we'll learn a specific thing in a three part process so it's always part one part two part three and it's always focused on learning your fundamentals so part one is usually about perspective and form part two is where you study another artist and then part three is where you learn how to combine those things you've done and coming up with a new design so and to make those videos you always have to have like examples of how we did it so right now i'm basically doing all the examples together with uh, another artist Ognen Ognen Sporin i don't know if you know him but uh it's also really good all right and by the way just before i quickly move on to like the next subject i need to quickly mention that for anyone who's watching this on youtube or maybe even noticing it on the audio version as well if my sound feels a bit low or tired or i look like a zombie uh i'm sorry about that like i haven't slept for two days i couldn't sleep for two days like i have have pretty bad insomnia and even like i actually run right now i'm kind of drinking a little bit of like you know juice that would potentially help me sleep better tonight after this call potentially and yes and so it's because of that just wanted to let you guys know and um yeah moving on um how does your design process usually go anytime you want to start working on a new piece or project basically what does a structure for a pipeline look like hmm. like for personal projects or more like uh, the stuff both. we did at sketch or both yeah so um with sketch we were mostly doing blue sky so it's like the very first part of the process of of designing which is where the client has like a general idea of the story but nothing has been fleshed out yet so we're basically coming up with as much different designs as possible and then as soon as the client has like a favor for anything we'll just explore within that region so we're actually with blue sky we're doing everything before real concept art let's say so as soon as we develop some characters and some silhouettes and some designs and we're basically creating like a like a specific design language like a like a rule book where then in the future concept artists can use that as a reference and say like okay this is these are our design rules and you have to create variations of this character and this costume or you know these animations or these you know attacks or weapons or whatever all within those rules so like a style guide basically and yeah in that process it was always very sketchy uh very high focus on sketching so um not much painting it was always sketching with lines coming up with cool designs and then blocking in the silhouette and then designing in the silhouette as well with some color uh, usually with values and for myself personally whenever i try to come up with something um, i usually look at a lot of references first and i create like a little mood board and if i'm really into it i also create like a like a story because that's what that's what evan amundsen always really hammers on is like to create like an entire story for each character and flesh out all the details like the world building the technology character personality all that stuff before you actually go into designing but uh it takes up a lot of energy and and time and usually when i want to draw something i just immediately want to jump into it so um i don't always do that but when i do it it really works as well but um yeah i just got my mood board and then got my personality traits and then I try to design within those traits like um, if I have a very sturdy blocky uh, character then I'm going to use that a shape language that resembles that as well so and then I just start sketching and yeah I don't really have like a fixed amount of thumbnails that I do or anything I just I just start sketching and if if I like what I got then I continue but if I don't like it then sometimes I just start over like 10 20 times like sometimes it can take hours and then I'm happy or sometimes I'm just happy from the beginning and then I can continue with the rough sketch refine the sketch create like a like a flat color layer add some shadows on top some highlights and then 
usually I don't spend that much amount of time on rendering. I, I really prefer the drawing instead of the rendering. All right. And well, now let's actually talk about something really interesting that we actually talked before uh, we started this, you know, recording, which was drawn, which I actually mentioned it, the, the ID to draw on the Instagram page and all the other info, which is in that page as well with the links to the websites and all that good stuff is in the caption of this episode down below. So you can definitely check it out. It's drawn the underline official D R A W N E D. I mean, yeah, there's no weird spelling is literally just drawn. <laughs> yeah, you can see it on the T-shirt as well. If you're watching it on YouTube. And uh, yeah, so, all right, I'm not going to say any extra details. I'll let you explain everything. All right. So uh, the reason we quit working for AAA clients at uh, Sketch was because me and Antonio, um, yeah, by the way, Antonio, who is the, the owner of Sketch, is also the founder of Artbot. So we just said like, okay, Right now we're doing drawn, we're doing sketch, we're doing art. Well, it's a lot of different things. So we need to narrow our focus so we can make stuff work. So that's why we decided to just focus on drawn and art. Well, and drawn is a clothing brand that we started. And we just have like one primary goal with drawn, which is to foster human creativity. And what I mean by that is that we want to make sure that we can give artists an opportunity to create their own original artwork and then being able to make a living out of that. So what we want to do is we want to create a clothing brand and we want to invite other artists to be part of the brand and then use original artworks and particularly line art and sketches. And then we're going to print those on high quality clothing and then we're going to sell them and um yeah that's basically it that's the that's the idea here and in the beginning we're gonna focus on growing the brand so what i mean by that is that in the beginning we want to work with the biggest names in the industry and that's also a really important point that i forgot to mention is like we want to work with artists specifically working in the entertainment industry because we've seen a lot of clothing brands already that work together with tattoo artists. Like I can already name like five different clothing brands focused on tattoo artists, but uh, I've never really seen a clothing brand with artists from the entertainment industry, like artists that work on games or movies or TV shows. So um, yeah, that's like a specific niche that we have. So. Like I said, we were focusing on growing the brand first. So that means that we reach out to all the bigger names in the industry, like Antonio, Ogden Sporin, Karl Kopinski, somebody we really like to see. And then Evan Amundsen is somebody we also really want to have on the brand as well. And then if we have those names, we can grow the brand. And then once we have like a significant following or audience, then we can provide value to aspiring artists as well. So then we can have those create designs for us as well. And then we can work with like a royalty system where we can offer as much as we can back to the artist and also being able to grow consistently as a brand itself. So that's kind of in short what we're trying to do here. All right. And who are some of your favorite artists and designers that have inspired you the most? Mm. Good question. Um, yeah, for sure, Antonio. Um, like, he's the whole reason why I started doing concept art and learning how to draw. And he also taught me how to draw with Artwatt. So um, he was like a very big influence for me. And he was also my first mentor. And right now he's a really good friend of me. So um, Antonio and then also Evan Amundsen. It's like the first time that I saw his stuff that was like completely blown away because it was like this another level of painting and storytelling that I've never really seen before. And I also did a mentorship with him. This is a crazy experience that, I'll, that I will never forget. And um, who else? 
Uh, I'd say Agni Sporin also. He's also a teacher at Artwell. Um, I really, really look up to him because uh, he's also one of my favorite artists, particularly because he's so good at shape design. Like the way he can create shapes with just lines is just unbelievable. And yeah, there, there are more for sure. Like, Cynics also. Cynics more so in the beginning. Um, back when I first started, I watched like a lot of Cynics videos and I also really found the whole design theory series really helpful and all the anatomy series. Those were like great, great tutorials and they taught me a lot. Uh, but I'm trying to think of more names. Um, usually there's more like phases that I have, like when I'm really into an artist and then I kind of move on to another one and then another one. But uh, another one I would say is Raul, Raul Moreno Coslado or something. I, it's like a Spanish name. I'm probably butchering it. But um, And then, of course, Felipe Pagliuso. I don't know if you know him. He's a great, great, great artist from Brazil. I also did like a, like a workshop with him online though, uh, a few months ago. All right. And oh, my microphone dropped. Oops. Oops. And all right. So, like, I mean, by this point, we talked a lot about, you know, arts related stuff and questions. But now I want to ask you something else. What other non arts related stuff you got going on in your life that you're doing or pursuing? I mean, before our call, you mentioned Jiu Jitsu, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, but just yeah. in general, you know, along those lines, what are stuff you're, you have in your life that are completely non arts related? Mm. Um, well, yeah, like, like we talked before the recording started, uh, we, I used to do a lot of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, um, but unfortunately I stopped doing that because like I said before, uh, ever since I start started working as a, as a freelance artist, I was really scared of getting injured because once I was injured then I couldn't make money anymore of, of creating art. So, um, that's the reason why I stopped doing it. But uh, right now, to be honest, um, I don't really have a lot else going on. Um, ever since I started drawing, there's just so much work and, and effort going into that project, like setting up the whole legal things with creating a, uh, with creating the business, making sure our entire production line is, is working. So it's a lot of emails that have to be sent and created and a lot of checking and, you know, it's so much more than I thought it would be. And also like building a brand is also really time consuming with the whole social media part of it, creating content uh, and all that stuff. But uh, I'd say mostly I'm just learning about business. Um, like I start learning with art right now. I'm just really spending hours every day learning about business. So there's this couple of guys that I really like watching on YouTube and Instagram. And one of them is Alex Hormozzi. Uh, shout out to Alex. Uh, he's a really, really amazing person. Like his understanding of business is, is, is it's like the Evan Amundsen of business almost. Uh, it's crazy. But um, besides that, yeah, just spending time with my girlfriend. We play some board games here and there. We watch some movies sometimes. But uh, yeah, I got my time filled with, with art while drawn. That's, uh, that's uh, more than a full-time thing. So That's awesome, man. Yeah. And... Well, we've reached the final question, a section of the podcast, which is called Time Capsule. And all right, let me, let me just phrase a question, a situation like this. Um, if you had to summarize your whole life experience in a few sentences, and those few sentences are, wait, 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 hold on. <laughs> and those few sentences are the most important lessons you've learned in life that you could give as tips and advice to anyone who might be listening to this podcast at any point of time in the future. What, what are those, like, you know, just whatever some of the most impactful things you've learned thus far that you think, you know, even if you could go back in time and tell your younger self or just in general, you know, not just in that scenario, like your, your essence of whole experience by now, if you could express that, 
in a couple of sentences? That's a really good question, man. Um, yeah. Uh, first thing I'd say is that you can you can be everyone, everything you'd like to be. Um, I, I never thought it would be possible to to be where I'm at today if I look back five, four years uh, from now because I was literally a nobody back then. So uh, the first lesson is really like if you can imagine it, you can definitely become it. So that's one. And then the second thing is don't take nothing for granted. Like I lost, throughout learning how to draw, I lost some, there were moments where I took some moments from granted, like for example, uh, time with my family or with my girlfriend, because I was always so obsessed with learning how to draw. And then I completely was out of balance because I was only focusing on one thing. But um, right now I noticed that that's not actually the most important part in life. I learned that the most important thing in life is to actually enjoy life. And usually that means spending time with people you love. So it's it's about finding balance. It's about finding balance, balance in becoming a better person and developing your skills and also enjoying enjoying the whole process, you know? Like you can you can be so hard on yourself for years and years and years and becoming really, really good. But then if you look back, then those two, three years were just like absolute shit. And then you didn't enjoy one second of it. You only enjoyed the, the progress. So yeah, I think those two things are what I would tell myself back then. That's awesome, man. And think about it. Like, I mean, of course, when you think back about your past, you're like, oh, I wish I spent more time with my you know loved ones and all that stuff. You could never take that back. You could never change that. But you kind of, you know, in a sense, when you actually, like one of the beautiful things about this question is when you kind of, you know, tell your life lesson, your mistakes to someone else, you kind of, it means first you learn from it. And second, it means you've reached a, like a very constructive conclusion to it. So it mm-hmm. wasn't just a mistake that you can carry for the rest of your life. You made something out of that experience. You're telling it to other people and other people yeah. and the chance of that mistake being hap- happen by other people are going to be much less. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so for sure. That's one of the reasons I always ask this question because it's like, I always get really interesting answers, you know? And as I said before, like, you know, this podcast kind of personality driven in a sense. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. yeah, like, you know, with all the technical questions and stuff, all that aside, but you know, we're all humans. And um, I think everyone, regardless of, you know, what level they are at their art or, you know, what even age they are actually, I think everyone, even though everyone has a perspective on the same subject, but everyone's perspective and just the way they look at things is different, mm. which could give us like, you know, different, like, you know, perspectives on the same thing, which is, I think, which adds more dimension to our understandings of that subject, which I think is really important. No, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's really important. Like, uh, then I would add, ask, I would add one more lesson to that is basically to just do your own thing and don't look to what other people are doing. Um, being authentic and, and doing finding your own way basically is so important because especially as artists, we're always comparing ourselves to other people and it takes away so much joy and progress of learning because you're always comparing yourself to somebody else. And if you do that, you always come second place like regardless of who the other person is like just compare yourself to yourself and don't look what everybody else is doing and if you do that then everything will become more enjoyable and if you enjoy it more then you'll learn faster you learn more and you just have a better life so that's awesome man that's awesome thank you so much for coming by and where can people contact you if they had any questions is your instagram account okay yeah, just Instagram. Um, I think that's like the only platform where I'm really active. Uh, I do have an art station, but I'm not really on that anymore. But yeah, so Instagram is probably the best way to contact me. Yeah, guys, and definitely don't forget to check out for, you know, um, 
Oh god, I hate my memory when I'm sleep deprived. <laughs> Front official, yeah. Front like official. I, the pages, you know, down in the description down below. Don't keep an eye for that. There's going to be like you know, artworks, you know, by different you know artists. There are going to be like you know drops, you know, every well. And in the future, once it gets actually, uh, like they once they finally manage to get the ball rolling, you know, yeah, properly, exactly. you know, they're going to you know do like you know kind of like this sort of uh, contest where you know people do like this draw draw it in your style stuff and the winner could have their own design yeah, on the nice. of drawn so yeah there's yeah. so many cool things you know planned ahead in the in their timeline so you know definitely give it yeah, like you know give it a look and also it's for a good cause it's for artists you know it's against ai so um we definitely don't want our creativity to be gone by like like yeah that. yeah so yeah it's I'll, I'll, let's give it even if you don't like, want to do anything or just just give it a listen just give it a look just share it with your friends i mean i don't know like yeah. it's a good thing and with that being said again thanks so much for coming by and taking your time for this episode yeah, thank you for yes. the invite man oh my pleasure nice. and thank you to anyone who tuned in and listened to this episode i am so sorry again if like i was kind of off balance today like one of the mentalities I have in general, not just podcast, is regardless of what happens, if I have a de- if I have a set date for something, I will make that thing happen no matter what. Like one of the episodes I did, like you know, I think it was with someone in Riot, like I think two years ago. Like at the time, I had the date set, but my laptop broke, mm. so I didn't cancel it. I took all my equipment, I took all my light ring and all that stuff. I put it in a backpack at 7 a.m. I went to my friend's house, like, which I had to walk, like, you know, in winter. And I, I'm not making, I know I'm making it sound dramatic, but it kind of was, <laughs> to a sense. <laughs> but, yeah, because I had to walk, like, 50 minutes, like, with all this equipment to my friend's apartment. And I used his very old, you know, broken down laptop, which, of course, I'm still grateful. I managed to record it. But that feeling of accomplishment you get when... You feel like no obstacle can, you know, stop me from doing what I like. That's so powerful. Like, I mean, of course, it would be easy. Oh, yeah, man, you know, we can do it another day. And we would have done it with a fresh laptop. But there's no fun in that. Hmm. You know? And, yeah, the same thing with this. Like, I've, like, since this morning, I've been just pumping out an editing podcast, like, episode 244, 245, 246, and now 247. And actually, after this, even though I'm drinking my, you know, sleep juice, I'm going to edit it, then sleep. That's how nice. I just work sometimes. Uh, I'm, I'm, it doesn't mean I'm a super disciplined person. No, I'm actually not. I'm actually really lazy. But yeah, sometimes I get bursts of motivation. But that's on our topic. Yeah, just... Yeah, got to capitalize uh, on those bursts. <laughs> yeah. So just for now, take care, everyone. Stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye. All right. Bye, everyone. All right, folks, we're technically back because, you know, after, you know, we were done with the recording, I, I was like, you know, I kind of not me, just we were both like, you know, there are some other things, you know, we we just, you know, remembered we could have talked about. And I was like, damn, it could have been, you know, good that we added to the podcast. So, you know, we wrote it down. We took a little break and we're back again. So you're probably listening or listening to this or watching this after we said the goodbye. <laughs> so hi again. <laughs> Technically, yeah. So, yeah, you can still edit it somewhere in the middle. Or... <laughs> no, actually, like I think I think it's more organic to put it in the end. You know? Exactly. Yeah. It's just a little break, you know. No one's gonna notice. They just see the link of the video and say, "Oh, it still continues," but they're saying the goodbye. What's going on? So wait a second for a couple of two seconds later. You know, we're back. You go. Yeah. And yeah, actually, like the first thing I I thought would be a really interesting idea to start off with was you know when I started you know ask uh, like earlier about how kind of fell into this path of like you know picking your specialty as a concept artist, which you said you actually don't do it anymore because of you know you guys are working on you know drawings right now. Mm-hmm. But you know, aside from that, like you know, what other areas you were really passionate about? You know, learning with you know, are you the type of people? that type of person artist who wants to learn everything he wants to learn illustration environments characters mm-hmm. or you know from the get-go you knew what you liked there was just a set of things that clicked in your brain how was it for you hmm. no that's actually a good question because i definitely was like that in the beginning where maybe i always throughout my life um i don't know if i don't know if you have the same thing but um i was also always really afraid to make a decision like um i remember playing uh, our MMORPG ba- 
MMORPG games back when I was younger. And when you have to create your character, you create, you pick a class. I couldn't pick one class. I had to try them all. And then after months of playing, I leveled up each character to level 20. And then I still wasn't sure what I was going to pick. And the same thing kind of was happening when I was drawing or learning how to draw is that... Uh, First, I want to be a tattoo artist, and then I want to be a concept artist. And then I find out about illustration and environment art and prop design, vehicle design, and all that stuff. So I kind of did all of them. And then I learned one another really important life lesson is that nothing is set in stone. Like if you go for something, do it but you still have the opportunity to do something else later. So it's not like, fun. okay, I'm going to learn concept art, but then I have to be a concept artist for the rest of my life. Like, no, you can just try it and then see what happens. Like, I don't know if you kind of know what I'm saying here, but... Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Like, you know, sometimes if you don't try something and go for it, you know, you never know, you know, if it's going to stick with you or not, you know. Or sometimes when the, the opposite happens, you think you like something, you go for it and you realize... Nah, not really exactly yeah but for me it was always like um, I always ask myself this question like what I what am I going to do in life and I always thought it was such a different thing like what is the thing I see myself doing until I am 60 70 years old and that's such a scary question to answer because I don't think there is really such a thing that you can do from 20 till 60 the same thing and be happy like it's it's such an organic process about you like also with concept art like you start maybe you do character design and then you learn about prop design and then you fall completely in love with prop design and then maybe down the line i don't know you start creating podcasts and you fall in love with doing podcasts and like um i don't know if you read the book mastery from robert green or if you know the book yeah, I know the book. I think, you know, I I usually, like, I, I'm kind of guilty of that. I don't really read books anymore. I just watch yeah. people, like, those 20, 30 minutes videos on YouTube that explain the whole synopsis of oh. <laughs> and It's a great way to I, save time, yeah. Not say, I guess, yeah, but, I mean, it's not good that... Yeah, you don't really get the full value of the book, uh, though, but... Oh, yeah, what I was trying to say is that in, in that book, Robert basically... He studied all the masters in, and what I mean by that is masters in his eyes. So it was Leonardo da Vinci, uh, Napoleon was the master of warfare and all that stuff and much different people as well. But um, one of those conclusions was the fact that you should always work towards something. And then while working towards that thing along the road, you come up you'll come across new doors, new new opportunities, and then you'll dive, dive into that as well. And then maybe you start, I don't know, learning how to draw, wanting to be a tattoo artist, and then in 10 years, you are something completely different. Maybe you're a DJ, you're creating music or whatever. Like, it's always the journey of working towards something, and then along that path are new opportunities. And then maybe you jump on it, maybe you don't. But it's just such an organic thing that you don't really know the outcome. And for me, that was very um, comforting to know that nothing is set in stone. Like I just said, like you don't have to pick something and that means you're going to keep on doing it till the end of your life. And that's something I always told myself was like, oh, I have to be a concept artist. Do I really want to be a concept artist? Like till I'm done at 60 or something so um yeah it doesn't have to be like that yeah i mean unfortunately a lot of us fall into this trap of like you know up subconsciously that you know oh we need to you know just i mean of course like don't get me wrong in when it comes to mastery yeah mm. laser focus on one thing yeah that's an obvious thing but when it comes to actual like you know joy and fulfillment of like doing things but you, you can do a lot of stuff like you don't have to like l l mentally like you know limit yourself into a box like oh mm. i'm an artist like i can't be like i don't know um a fitness model or something like i don't know that was just a random example like yeah you're or, i don't know just i'm an no, artist it's a good it's a good um 
reference. Like I think Cynix talks about this as well. It's like he gains inspiration from cooks. Like he applies things that he sees different cooks doing to his own stuff. And I think that's the whole point of mastery is just to go beyond what you're used to. It's like look at other things and find value in that and then apply it to your own stuff that you're doing. And yeah, maybe it's not for everyone. Like I think true mastery, of course, comes from dedicating all your focus to towards one thing and be like a real draftsman. But, you know, I think you can look at the term master in different ways. Like you can be master of a specific subject, but usually when you look at masters in, in history, they all have like a very weird journey. Like they start out as one, they start out as one thing and they end up being something completely different, but it's the journey that matters. Yeah, definitely. And like, here's a weird thing. Like, I don't want to get too philosophical, but I've seen this many, many times in like different mythologies, stories, or even not just fictional things, even in real life, like people. Like, when you have a goal or dream or just something you want to achieve, mm-hmm. and if you're a really determined person, you have a lot of fun, you're really active, you're really engaged. But once you get that, you usually with those people fall into this really weird depression you know like can you rephrase it again like people yeah. that are working towards something yes or- something a huge goal for example mm-hmm. and they get that thing they reach that they think that's gonna make them happy but then mm. they're like it's not that different and they get depressed exactly. actually actually they get depressed exactly. because there's what's what's after that they mm. can't find anything sometimes yeah, so yeah, yeah. Like there was this like really interesting thing. I don't know. Do you know Mortal Kombat? The I game? do. I yeah. played it. Yeah. You basically in one of the endings of the Mortal Kombat 11 of a character called Kano. Like it's kind of the same philosophical. Actually, a good life lesson. Like he basically got huge powers, and he basically anyone who, like you know, defeats the final boss of that game gets the power to write history. All right. And mm-hmm. this guy chose to write history in every. In, pleasurable imaginable way that he could but then he got depressed so what he did was change the way to become actually more very challenging for him to reach those goals and he had so much fun mm. he had so much fun he was doing it all over again and again and again and again because it's not necessarily the thing you're chasing i mean i'm not gonna like be so sentimental yes sometimes of course getting that thing is actually makes you happy of course yes sometimes yeah but yeah, it's very short. Yeah, but the thing is, you know, like the, when you're in the process of like you know working towards a goal, that's I think in a sense what life is. I think I agree. That's the I think every person has or needs some sort of thing that they need to work towards. Like it's a project or a goal or just anything. Like I think depression or unhappiness just comes from being stuck like not doing anything and um to come back to your point what you just said about many people have like this whole goal and idea like oh i need to work towards that and then i'll be happy or whatever and that really relates to me because like i said i was really in the beginning of the interview i said i was really depressed when i was working at the chemical factory i was like very unhappy with my life and then i set myself like the biggest goal i could then imagine myself doing which which was like a concept artist for a triple a company like that was the end goal and then i envisioned myself like a long road of first of all learning how to draw learning art in general and then getting a job and then working my way up to the triple a company so i thought it was like a 10 year journey or something but then in two years and four months i reached that goal and i felt so unhappy because i thought like okay what's next like i didn't think about what should be next like that was so far beyond what i was like far further in my timeline of my of my goal um and then when i got the news that hey you got accepted for you know this big triple a project 
it was two things. First was like this thing, like, okay, now I reached my goals. Now I don't have anything planned. So then I felt into like the whole being stuck again thing. And secondly, I really suffered from a lot of imposter syndrome. Like how could be, how could I, somebody who just started learning how to draw two, two years and four months ago, already compete with these very good concept artists and, you know, I was comparing myself to them and all that stuff. So yeah, there was a lot of unhappiness in there. But um, there was a lesson learned there that uh, happiness or joy comes from within and not from outside of you. Like even if your external circumstances change your environment or whatever, eventually you'll get used to it and then you'll go back to your same feelings. Um it, it kind of reminds me of, uh, again, Alex Ramosi, the, the guy that I mentioned in the podcast, the famous entrepreneur. He once had like a, like a call with another entrepreneur and he was kind of his coach. And he said, and the, the topic of the call was the fact that this entrepreneur, and I don't know his name, but um, Alex helped him scale his company from one to three or four million, I think. So it's like a three to four X increase. So it's pretty significant increase or it's even 10 million. I don't know. But um, the point was that he was still, um, he had the same feelings he had when he was at 1 million, then he was at 10 million. The same level of unhappiness, the same level of stress. So even though his entire environment changed, he was still the same person within. So that's such an important lesson to think that it's not the outside, it's always the inside. Like you can become a professional concept artist and illustrator, but you will still think that you suck. You will still feel unhappy. You will still feel very critical about your art. It's not going to go away, really. It's only the way you deal with those feelings and emotions, I'd say. Like, do you experience the same thing when you look back when you start learning art like you said you do 3d environment stuff right yes I assume there's some crossover to what i'm saying is, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah definitely um i mean my case is a bit different when it comes to like these type of examples but um like let me just say like the times i've actually felt this type of like you know dynamic that you know we just talked about um like for a while like i like let's talk about exams for example hmm. you know you, think, you know once i pass this exam i'm gonna be happy once it's like i get this university interest exam i'm gonna be happy i mean it's gonna be over the stress is gonna be over once this sickness that i have it's gone i'm gonna be better like you you're so much in pain but you're like oh i just, if this thing just gets fixed i don't give it like a damn about my other problems just please god if you exist do something and you say you say all this stuff and that gets fixed everything gets better all the things you were worried about gets fine, but you're still like, there, your brain generates new things that were lying dormant in the back of your head. Like there's always something to worry about. Mm. So at the end of the day, like I think, you know, bad times are actually good. You know, I'm actually really, I know that sounds such a cliche, like a boring yeah. thing to say, I know, I know, but <laughs> but honestly, if you don't really experience really, no, not just bad times, just bad experiences in general, horrible experiences, you know, like, let's say in childhood you had a lot of abad- abandonment issues. You've been abandoned a lot by, by your friends, by people, by partners, by parents, or just everyone. You, you're a mess without even realizing. Mm-hmm. Because you've, because of that, you've get, you, you start to form this sense of empathy about this. And not just that, you start to appreciate people's love in your life when they come to you. So imagine everything was given to you on a silver platter in your life. You, you don't really know, you don't even notice people's no, efforts you and don't know even better right? yeah, because in order to like you know feel like here's the thing in order to sense the heat you need to know what cold is yes you know? mm. does that make sense that makes sense yeah and for also sure vice versa and i guess it goes in everything you know even every single thing you can you know apply this type of like you know example to th- that counts you know yeah, for sure. Like hell. Like, uh, yes, are gone. Yeah, I would. I had some stuff going on. I assume everybody has like stuff going on in their lives, and you know, I'm grateful for it. Like it taught me so much. 
Like it became me, it made myself such a conscious person about who I am, what I'm thinking, what I'm feeling. And there's so much value in that. I think like too many people just live their lives and they're just existing. They're not really living. They're just existing. They don't really think about what they're doing, about them being unhappy, doing a job they don't like, just going through life without really experiencing it the way they should. So, and I think if you come across, come across those points in your life, then everything goes to shit. Sorry for my language, but everything goes really bad and it's horrible and all that stuff. I think those are the points that you really get tested and it allows you to learn new things and get a ben- better understanding about yourself and life, which ultimately leads to a better life itself. So I'd, ra- I'd rather have that than just being this numb person, just doing things, just, you know, doing the nine to five, living for the weekends, go drink in the weekends, going back to work on, work on Monday, hating the job, and then live your whole life like that. I don't know. That's uh sounds horrible yeah but that's like another big topic like you know thing. but yeah um yeah that could actually be an episode of its own actually now that i think about it but like, like yeah. uh, but i guess let me see if there was something in my head i actually wanted to add to this subject and honestly like i'm just i'm just gonna say this right i just remember one point i was gonna say that um you know, when you mentioned, like, you know, things, I, I can imagine myself doing things, you know, from when I'm 20 to 60, like, doing concert art all the time. Mm-hmm. I feel the same way. I honestly just, I, I, I'll still do art and 3D environment art as my own hobby because I love that. Mm-hmm. And, but, like, there are things that I could, that, that I could say I can see myself doing for the rest of my life. Like, you know, playing chess, gardening. Do you play chess? Play. Oh, yeah, I love chess. Like oh, nice. going, going on hikes and like there's so many fun things in life that I can just do for the, till the day I die, you know. So it's True. not it's not about that. So it, my my personal plan is, and I'm gonna ask your plan. What your plan is is to just make enough money to go off grid. Honestly, like I'm not even exaggerating. Make enough money to go off grid, have my own place, be self sustainable, just be out of society as much as I can. Of course, I have my access. I can. I have a car. I can you know just go out of town, you know, visit my friends and all that stuff. But all in all, I love that sort of lifestyle of just being in a shack in the woods, and I just you know make jams and pickles and hunt my own food, <laughs> grow vegetables and gardens, have my own carpentry workshop, oh, do yeah. my own little sculptures, you know, and make my own bear traps, you know, in case people want to rob me or ambush me, and I just be that crazy. Let that location in a Skyrim where you go and there's a shack and there's like some crazy guy in there and he, he attacks you. I'm gonna be that guy, you know. Yeah, it sounds and, amazing, man. It sounds yeah, amazing. Yeah, and um, that's basically kind of my plan. And it would be much awesome if I could, you know, have my family there if I even have one at one point. But yeah, how about yours? Well, it's actually pretty similar. Um, I also want to just kind of make enough money that I can just have financial security, you know, just being secure. Like whatever happens, I'm set. Like I can just quit my job, quit everything and I'm set for life. And so is my girlfriend. So will be my, my kids when I eventually have those that I provided or I built this thing that provides me so much security and um, I'm not really sure where I want to live, but I assume it's somewhere pretty, you know, far off alone. And um, yeah, my girlfriend really wants to stay close to her family. So it's still something we need to work out, but uh, yeah, it's, it's just that. And, and then being able to create whatever I want to create. And I just want to build amazing things with amazing people. Like, uh, I just, I just have all these different ideas, man, coming up to me so frequently about, you know, different types of board games or computer games. And how cool would it be if you could just have the people around you and say like, Hey man, I got this idea for a game. Let's just 
go to work on it. Like you can draw, I can draw. We we know some guys that can do 3D. We know some programmers and all that stuff. And then you can just create. But you never have to worry about bringing in money to, you know, survive, buy food. And then also I'm really big on the the whole food part about, you know, being self-sustainable and all that stuff. Because, uh, you know, I try to be healthy, but the government don't really allows me. So... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, if you think about it, your water, your heating, your cooling system, everything is just on government. And that's kind of scary. It's you very know? scary. I don't want to get super conspiracy and stuff like that. But yeah, that's like a very like out of topic, like, you know, subject. But um, we all kind of know that governments don't have the best interests of us. You know, we're just <laughs> like, I mean, that's, I think everyone at this point kind of gets it. But um. Yeah, oh, but, yeah, but there, there are some there's some yeah areas like for example with food, um, like the whole chemical shit that they just spray on over your food. Like you go to the grocery store and you think like, hey, I'll be healthy. I'll I'll buy some fruits. I'll buy some strawberries. I'll, I'll buy some blueberries. But then you're just poisoning yourself because they're spraying so many toxic waste on top of those things to make them look shiny and all that stuff but there's certain fruits that can't really protect themselves against those things so they'll just absorb everything you just put on it like strawberries for example like if you take strawberries and you would squish them together and you could that you could then use that mush as a new fertilizer or how you say it like a new chemical thing to spray on over other plants compost, and stuff right you mean compost yeah compost is more like a like a natural thing i think oh yeah, like, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah the stuff that keeps bugs away stuff that keeps insects and bugs away it protects the fruit but it, it's like really chemical chemically enhanced so that everything stays off it like nothing happens to it like it, it kills everything that tries to reach it or eat it so that's why bugs or like parasites don't go for it i don't know i think it's isn't it called a fertilizer or um, pesticides they're called i think yeah anyway <laughs> that's why i want to grow my own food you know and i'm sure nothing is uh wrong with it yeah and you're worried about the strawberries over here i'm I, as i said I'm, i don't want to go into too much details but just a quick google search on how factor farming is here like yeah, I'm not touching that stuff anymore. I mean, which actually is kind of ironic because I still do because I'm lazy and just, you know, kind of, yeah, yeah. That that's the only word, that's the best way I could describe it. I'm, I'm lazy and yeah, I'm not proud of it, but yeah. And what, what do you mean then that you... That don't... I still consume meat products out of like the refrigerators in the stores. Mm, like yeah. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> like the eggs just everything is just listen every, every single thing we eat out of source are pumped with hormones and chemicals that grow hormones that just so many messed up things like oh my god like i mean of course i mean it doesn't take a genius to know that you know at least if you go on a vegan diet it's much healthier for you for obvious reasons and like yeah. <laughs> but in the end you know they're all like you know like just just if it's possible for you, go and live in like a village for just a weekend, two, three days. And inhale good air, drink good water, you know, and just, you know, eat good fruit and food and local cuisine. And you're, it's something else, like, you know, especially if it's somewhere that's very far off from civilization, which means the soil that the plants are farmed on are very rich in nutrients. So yeah, yeah, you'll notice a difference, honestly. Yeah, I, I can't imagine, like, um, I never really did that. You know, I do my best here. Like, I make sure that I drink natural spring water. Um, I pick fruits that are pretty good at protecting themselves. When I eat meat, I try to, you know, pick the right ones and all that stuff. But uh, there's this other thing that I learned um, is that, don't try to be too perfect. Like I know myself um, and I'm pretty sure other people can relate is that when you're like very unhappy or anything, you're always searching outside of yourself. 
like, oh, maybe it's the food I'm eating. Like, oh, I need to eat healthy. And so you start eating healthy, eating healthy. And then as soon as you eat one piece of pie or you eat one waffle or anything, you feel completely like shit. Like, oh, I messed up. Oh, fuck. Oh, this, that. And it's the same with everything. It's, it's everything becomes a crutch, like meditation, sports, eating healthy. Like you can start doing them. But at least for me, I noticed that I was so, I was holding on so much to those things that I had to do them in order to feel good. And it's actually that kind of thing that gave me so much stress. Um, Because I saw this uh, example today where there was this lady, she was 116 years old and she was drinking alcohol, smoking cigarettes and all that stuff. And the whole point of the, of the post was basically like, just live your own life, do what makes you happy. And that happiness will make you live longer than you being stressed out, whether or not you should eat a strawberry that's, you know, with chemicals or anything. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's the stress of always trying to do the best thing. Like, okay, I need to take cold showers in the morning. I need to meditate. I need to run. I need all those things in order to be happy. But you don't really need to do them. Like, sure, they help. They help a lot. But just living a happy life or enjoying life, let's say, because happiness is like, you can't really be happy all the time. But uh, that's so much more important than trying to do everything perfect in order to be happy or good or healthy and all, all the stuff. Yeah, basically what you're saying, like, you know, in a nutshell is mental health. That's very simple. Like, you know, when I, I've seen those documentaries before with centurions, like centurions are basically a term used for people who are living past or live past 100 years. All right. And there was this guy, oh. World War II veteran that it was, I think, 108, nine years old. And he would still drive. He would have his, of course, he died a couple of years ago. Like, I think he lived up to 116 or something. I, I yeah. But I, I'm 100% sure he lived to 108 or 9 and he was still driving. And he would still have his Cuban cigar. He would still have his, like, butter, scotch, like, you know, uh, ice cream and alcohol and all that. And it's mental health. Like, you know, there yeah. are people who d- d- eat eggs and bacon and all this stuff that are bad for you every day up till the 1994 and this smoke cigarette and they're good like the most the biggest contributor to disease and just having weak immune system is just mental health like you know yeah, exactly which is i think is the most important thing like if you're f- stressed about your weight loss and but you're always stressed about it that's even worse for your health it's better to be fat and happy than just which of course that also gives a bad message but you get the point yeah, right there's come first. There's extremes on both sides, but indeed, it's it's better to be fat and happy than be fat and stressed, <laughs> for sure. But there's just some facts like being really obese is just not healthy. It, it it's oh, yeah. the same. It's the same with smoking thirty cigarettes a day is just unhealthy. Like you probably won't live very long, but you can live long if you just smoke a few a day and be very happy because you can. Or you can eat dessert every day as long as you compensate for it with just doing other stuff that's healthy. Like, okay, yes, men- I agree. Mental health is like the most important thing on, you know, on everything basically. And But there's just this balance. Like you can't do everything wrong and still think you're happy and that will be okay. It's just more like, okay, I can eat dessert every day, but I'm, I'll make sure that I work out. I'll make sure that I sport enough but that allows me to do other things that i really like even though if they're unhealthy but it's usually the stress and the overthinking that does the worst damage and gives you the most diseases at least that's what i believe it's a very yeah. broad topic uh no honestly i 100 percent agree with that yeah in my own, own experience the 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 worst diseases I've had was during the times I was extremely stressed and anxious. So yeah, they, it definitely plays a part. And so kind of basically to wrap things up and conclude is, yeah, we're like m- me and you included, you know, both of us included, we're basically doing art out of our passion. We still want to do it in some capacity, you know, for the rest of our life, but we're trying to make money to go off grid <laughs> and, you know, make your own food and stuff like that. Like basically like, maybe for anyone who's listening you know that could sort of goal because uh, like getting into financial freedom and stability is a stage everyone 
is trying to get you know which is getting harder and harder every day but um yeah after that you just try to find ways to rest as much as you can and just enjoy life every every moment so that's basically it in a very broad nutshell and yeah do you have anything else you want to add to that no i think it's a it's a good point to end it for real this time (laughs) All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed this part of the episode as well. And also, like, actually, like, tell us in the comments, you know, what are your experiences and thoughts, you know, on this stuff discussion? And that that could be interesting discussion, you know. And with that being said, as always, again, you know, take care, guys. Stay safe. And for the next episode.